What's up everybody? This is Paul from Boosted Films and in this video we're going to change the cabin air filter in a 2011 Chrysler Town & Country minivan. This is a very similar procedure you'll see for a lot of other cabin air filters you might change in different cars, but there are a couple details in this one that I want to point out that hopefully help you do this job. So we got our new cabin air filter here and we also have some tools. We have a flathead screwdriver and a needle nose pliers. Now you don't need both of these, but you should have at least one of these items. Uh, basically the flathead screwdriver I think is what's gonna work best, but I'll cover how you could utilize the needle nose pliers in a little bit. So the first thing we're gonna do in this job is open up our passenger side door and then we're gonna open up our glove box. If there's anything inside your glove box, you should take it out and just make things a little bit easier. And what we really want to do here is uh, squeeze in the sides of this glove box. And what that does is it allows us to drop the glove box down because our cabin air filter is kind of behind where this glove box is. However, the tricky part with this one is this has like this built in kind of soft open feature where it opens slowly. And because of that, on the left side, you can see there's this part where it connects uh, to this whole area that kind of helps open it slowly. So we're gonna have to remove this little piece here. And this is why I mentioned the tools earlier that you'd need. So you could, I believe, utilize a needle nose screwdriver and just kind of pull the little rope piece here off of this clip that's kind of clipped into the side of your glove box. However, I think uh, as I started doing that, it just kind of seemed occurred to me that it was probably easier to utilize a screwdriver here. Um, as you can see, I use, use a screwdriver and just kind of use my finger on the other side of it to pull back at the same time I use the screwdriver to slide it back. And then once you slide it back, uh, this little piece here should just kind of pop out of place. And that seemed to be the easier route for me as far as uh, getting this free. Now, as I mentioned earlier, these sides kind of squeeze in They're They're flexible. That's why there is that kind of slit uh, at the top part of uh, this. Uh, so you can squeeze those in a bit further. So we squeezed in the one on the right and then you squeeze the one on the left and this, uh, this glove box should just fall down and out of place. And what that's gonna do is reveal uh, this cover that covers up where our cabin air filter is. So there's a clip on either side of this cover and you should just be able to kind of squeeze uh, inward on each of these clips and that cover should pop off. As you can see, this cabin air filter has not been changed in a long time and was very dirty. Um, there was so much buildup on top. I used a screwdriver first to try to get some of this buildup out of the way uh, because I didn't want any of this stuff really trying to fall into the like blower motor that's below this filter. Uh, so I tried to get some of this top debris out of the way before I actually ended up pulling out this filter. And then you can utilize the same flathead screwdriver to get a little bit more of a grip on this filter if you needed uh, by sliding it uh, kind of up uh, to the bottom here and then just pulling out like this. And then you should be able to pull out your old cabin air filter. Again, if it's super dirty like this, try to kind of bring out as much of that debris and stuff that's on there as possible because um, then you're going to have to spend a little bit of time cleaning. Uh, if you have a vacuum, a shop vac or something, you might want to vacuum out all that old stuff that's around there or use your hand uh, to try to get some of that old debris out of the way. So here's our new cabin air filter and I always like to just pull out this new one and compare it to the one we pulled out just to make sure they sent us the right part just to make sure you know we're not going to run into any issues sliding this one in. You will also note it does have the air filter direction uh, on the side so that does tell you what way the airflow is and in this one and in most of them with this kind of layout where it's um, behind the dash part here the airflow direction will be down. So again, note the airflow direction arrow pointing down. You're gonna to have to give this a spin uh, so you won't be seeing that uh, airflow direction uh, looking right at you because you need to turn it diagonally to make it fit in this way because uh, it's not like a perfect square. So you just slide that back in. It should slide in pretty easily. Again, you can see I cleaned up all the other debris, um, all the other stuff that was dirtiness that was around there before I put that new one in. And then I'm not sure with this cover, uh, but it appears that it can go either way. I don't think there's an up or a down because honestly, I took this out <laughs> the other way with the print uh, being upside down and I put it back in, what, which would make more sense to me with the, just the print being, um, you know, there's some text on here that I had right side up. So it was readable. So I assume this can work either way, but if it seems tough one way, flip it around, try it the other way. And of course, pay attention to these wires on the left-hand side, at least for me, they were kind of in the way. So I moved the wires out of the way and then you should be able to just push this in uh, to the point where you should hear a clip in place and it should just pop in and hold on. 
So you could just touch it a little bit too, make sure it doesn't just pull off easily and then you should be all set. So now I'm just showing uh, this kind of soft open piece here. We're gonna pull this out out of the way and then lift up on our glove box a little bit and um, you know pull this off to the side and then we're gonna reconnect this piece. We're just gonna slide it in. Uh, this is a little bit hard to show here because I'm kind of using two hands to, uh, at once trying to lift up this glove box a little bit, but you should be able to lift up the glove box enough um, to then slide this piece in place and it should kind of pop in place. And then you'll have to just kind of slide it forward a little bit. Again, probably utilizing that same screwdriver. Uh, it should be a bit easier now. So just push it forward a little bit and it should pop fully in place. And then we're going to squeeze this left side here uh, over. Uh, you can give this a little bit of force. It's flexible plastic. And you just squeeze it over and then pull it up in place. And once we've done that to the left side, you should be able to do that same thing again to the right side. Squeeze it over uh, so it will clear and then lift it up in place. And there you go. You should be able to open and close your glove box with ease and it should work uh, just like it did before. So that's about it. That's how I changed the cabin air filter in this particular car. But of course, I am just a guy on YouTube uh, trying to make videos and document what I do. So if I did something wrong, or if you have a better recommendation of how to do something, please comment below and let me know. Also, let me know if this procedure worked for a similar vehicle. If you have a different year vehicle, um, even a similar minivan, but maybe not this particular one. If you let me know if this same procedure worked for you in the comments, that would be great. That way other people looking for how to on this could verify that it works for them as well. So as always, this is Paul from Boosted Films. Thanks so much for watching.